Only days after the defeat, um, we have a lot of Republican surrender monkeys, and they are telling us that we should change our policy on immigration. They are buying the line, and it is a suicidal line, that we must win over the Mexican vote at all costs. And note, by the way, I say not Hispanic, Mexican, that's what we're talking about. Last week I have read far too many pieces by Republican conservatives succumbing to panic, acting as though this election were somehow prophetic or apocalyptic. My immediate and patient reaction to those people is, calm down. We are being spooked and psyched by the Democrat and liberal pundits who see this as a perfect opportunity to capitalize on our worst fears and feed us bad advice. And Dick Morris has a detailed proposal uh, that lays out the same kind of legalization without full citizens' rights. By the way, Dick Morris is the person who predicted Romney would win it in a landslide. Um, that would make these people essentially helots, indentured servants in our society. Such a solution is not only suicide for Republicans, it's disastrous for our economy, it is contrary to our deepest notions of social equality as Americans. We don't believe in a class of peasants doing our dirty work and the rest of us being free people who rely on that slave labor. Within a few years, I promise you, and I love it when they say, oh, those people don't care about political rights, they just care about jobs. You know how long they will be here before the political activists get engaged in that community and foment something that will look like the civil rights movement for African Americans, but I can promise you it will be a lot bloodier. Um, well, first of all, if a person has a choice of choosing between his or her punitive values and all the goodies that the federal government will give you by way of entitlement, I can promise you that the entitlements will prevail over the quote unquote values. Uh, that's why. Uh, Mexicans register Democrat four to one or five to one. Uh, in addition, the notion that this community is conservative is simply laughable. A recent survey showed, in fact, that Mexicans in this country support gay marriage. The once intact Hispanic family has collapsed in this country. Nearly 60% of children are born out of wedlock. Church attendance among Hispanics, is, uh, sorry, Mexicans is essentially 100% female. Hispanic kids have the highest dropout rates in the United States. One third of our prison population is composed of illegal aliens. 40% of the federal prison system is composed of illegal aliens. These are conservatives? I'd like to know by what definition. In light of the upcoming battle within the Republican Party, and it's going to be one, and by the way, this battle has always raged in the Republican Party. Let us not forget that the last attempt at a major comprehensive immigration reform, a total disaster, was done under the direction of George W. Bush, and it was supported by the Republican Senate leadership, a disgrace, okay? And the only stalwarts we had, and they were terrific, were the House Republicans. Those were the ones who were there for us. Um, uh, I think it's very important that I put my cards face up on the table and let you know my explicit attitudes on immigration and I'm really only reflecting the attitudes of my think tank, the Center for Immigration Studies. I think we are the, we're the only think tank in Washington devoted only to this subject, and I think we do the best work, quite, quite frankly, on this subject. Um, so I'm going to put my cards face up so you know where I'm coming from. I wish the authors of the Texas Statement had had the decency and the honesty and guts to do the same. They didn't. Current levels of immigration are far too high. They are off the charts historically speaking. I'm not talking about what would happen if we had comprehensive immigration reform. That would be a tsunami of unbelievable proportions. I'm talking about what we have right now. This whole tsunami has come out of a ruinous decision to change immigration policy in 1965. That bill, the, the people who wrote it had no idea, by the way, that it was going to increase immigration. It wasn't meant to. Um, it has spawned on ending negative, unforeseen consequences ever since, and it's wreaking havoc up to this very day. Immigration is also the most important of all third rail issues because it has the greatest capacity of any one of them to radically transform who and what we are. To think about immigration realistically, we have to understand we cannot fix the entire third world or even Mexico by bringing it all here. 
A sensible immigration policy aimed at maintaining Ameri American global economic and technological leadership cannot be based on a concept as stupid as extended family reunification. You know, you start out with one person in the village of Mexico, and that person then can bring relatives, and it goes on, and it goes on, and you have the whole village here. And it's all based on family nepotism. There are no meritocratic criteria. No one is brought here based on what they know, any, any individual character traits that are good, any, any abilities, any advanced education. They're just here because they were related to one person who began a chain of immigration. This is lunacy. Um, yes, a lot of immigrants have contributed, even in recent times, to our competitiveness. But what about the Mexican peasants who have come here in numbers so gigantic that they outnumber if you, the next eight sending countries, if you combine them all together, the number we have for Mexico is greater than that of all the rest, than the Philippines, Russia, China, you, you name it. Recent uh, findings are showing a slight drop in Mexican immigration, and Asia is beginning to surpass it. I think, by the way, that's a good thing for the Republicans in the end, that the Asian demographic is going to be a good demographic for you, because these tend to be entrepreneurial people. Um, with better, much higher education levels. But the Mexican demographic is so high, it will be the dominant, as it were, immigrant community for years, and it will be mired in poverty for years. Um, most people predict that just to get to the same level as the American poor, it's going to take Mexicans about 22 years. Um, the most reliable place for information about the Hispanic community in America, and you know, I know I'm going back and forth, but I'm really focusing on Mexicans. And the term Hispanic is kind of a meaningless term. It's like saying European, you know? I mean, Hispanics don't think of themselves as Hispanic. They think of themselves as Cuban or Mexican or Venezuelan or Argentinian. I mean, but, so the issue really in the United States is Mexican and to a lesser degree, Central American immigration. That's the real issue. Um, uh, they show that 32% of the Mexican immigrants to this country have never finished ninth grade and are functionally illiterate in Spanish. 62% have never finished high school. Um, you tell me how someone's going to succeed in a post-industrial society uh, without a high school education. Anyone who thinks that they're showing their good hearts and their compassion by favoring illegal immigration or, or legalizing it, don't recognize that illegal immigration is slaughtering our own most vulnerable Americans. And that includes the elderly who still have to work. We have 20 million people, if you haven't noticed, who do not have full-time employment, while illegal aliens hold 7.5 million jobs. Um, African-American workforce participation has been dramatically cut um, and this is all because of unfair competition with cheap illegal labor. From the evangelicals, we're going to write to the liberal Jews, they're all in it. But you know what? Their congregants don't. We did a huge study on this phenomenon, and I'll refer to it later. There, the gap between the pulpit and the pew is about a thousand miles wide on this. I have to tell you, I believe that our religious leaders on this subject act like childish, naive people who really don't want to look at real world consequences. The most effective remedy for the reduction and eventual elimination of the huge illegal population in this country, which we all pretend is 11.75 billion, it could be twice that for all we know, is incremental attrition through enforcement. The X principles, well, they, by the way, mostly have to do with uh, founding a guest worker program to uh, enrich the building industry that controls uh, Austin. Um, now, I'll get to those principles shortly, but let me focus on the premium. What I just read to you is a flagrant example of question begging and question evasion. They can start using that. You know, at first they've been over their parents and they've been over their cousins, and it goes on and on and on. Rector did the math. The answer is not, the bottom line is not that you're going to legalize 11.75 million people. You are going to get 66 to 100 million people from Mexico in 20 years. That's the real number. I've been called a white supremacist. 
Uh, but by the way, I'm Jewish, and so I didn't know I was white until like uh, 30 years ago. Uh, so um, anyway, I'm a white supremacist. I, I mean, I don't think the KKK would take me. So, maybe, maybe. Uh, I mean, they're literally they're short of members now. So maybe, maybe. Uh, in 2003, my immigration shop invented the term and the concept attrition through enforcement. Um, that means you make, you enforce the law, you seal the border, and you make life untenable for illegal aliens. You go after the employers with tough sanctions and imprisonment because they are the worst. I can sympathize with some young kid from Mexico wanting to make some more money. I don't dislike that person. I don't hate that person. The person I can't stand is the employer who wants to profit by treating that person like, like a dog and, and, and going to the bank with a nice bank account. That person I, I can despise. Okay, Romney's problem, as I said, was not the issue. It was that he never explained the issue. Um, he wasn't getting that the Hispanic vote under any circumstances. The Hispanic folks, they're poor, they're working, and what do they want? They want a big, fat entitlement state. That's what they want. They don't want the vision of America that you want. It's a different, they have different needs, different desires, okay? You know, they're not looking for this entrepreneurial, you know, uh, system uh, showing how the market's going to work, they want to be taken care of. And the Democrats will get them every time, selling them that poisoned, poisoned medicine, uh, addictive medicine of dependency on the state. The Democrats will beat you every time. And you think, by the way, if you legalize them, they're going to thank you and come and vote Republican? <laughs> crazy. You're crazy. But this is actually is a stealth, something which pretends to be out there for the rule of law, but is in fact a stealth attempt for an amnesty to provide the construction industry and the Chamber of Commerce all the cheap labor wants. Um, if that's walls and double barbed wire fences, if that's the National Guard, if that's militarization, if that means moving military installations to the, to the border, that's critical. But what is doing it Recently, is, is, is not having um, uh, bread and butter notes posted along saying, you know, please don't come, uh, you know, unless invited, or, or what? Um, I mean, to me, that's weasel language because it's looking for a deal with the Mexican government. It has several criteria to become a guest worker. And there are at least three of those criteria that scream out and say, these are really not criteria. One of them is a knowledge of American civics. Can I ask you, do you need to know about the Revolutionary War to eviscerate a chicken? <laughs> this is an amnesty proposal, this Texas solution. Uh, it's a fraud, it's a phony. Um, it's, as I said, I don't know who wrote it, it might as well have been written by your construction industry and lobby or by the Chamber of Commerce lobby, or whatever it is is pushing for cheap labor, uh, which only, by the way, undercuts American wages and throws American workers out of jobs. We will have the Democratic Party being the pre, as in Mexico. We will have a permanent ruling party, and it's not going to be your party. Anyway, thank you.